So happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter. How many people really celebrate Easter? And, yeah. yeah, when I was growing up, I was taught it was the most important Christian holiday because it is the holiday in which we recognize and honor and celebrate life eternal. We celebrate the fact that no matter what happened to Jesus the Christ, he is risen. And that no matter what happens to us in our day-to-day -day lives, no matter what we face, the Christ within us rises again and again and again. It is a huge celebration. There is mystery in it. There is the mystery of life and death and the mystery of the truth that as spirit, we are eternal life. And then there's the mystery of how it came to be that a rabbit started laying eggs around <laughs> East. But it wouldn't be the same without that rabbit, right? Did everybody see the rabbit there? Okay. Yeah, I saw. Okay, good. I hear tell that the children are having an Easter egg hunt, probably even as we're sitting here. So let's send them good energy that they all find those beautiful eggs, right? So Christ is risen. That is what we are celebrating. That is the message. That's the wonderful news that we can embrace and remember over and over and over again. Easter, or that experience of resurrection, is not a once in a year happening. It happens over and over again in many spectacular moments, those moments where we move from that place of feeling overwhelmed, possibly crushed, possibly hopeless, to that sense of new possibilities, that sense of the power that lives within us, the love that moves through us, the joy that is the truth of our being. No matter what is going on, Christ is risen within us. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 6. There is a description of what happened on Easter Sunday. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone? Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. I mean, imagine that. You're walking into a tomb expecting to anoint the body of someone dear to you who had died, right? And instead, there is this luminous being sitting in a white robe. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they had laid him. So in that story, there is that expectation of a very somber ritual. There is the expectation of a stone that is heavy and immovable blocking the entryway to the tomb, and that sense of how are we going to move this stone? 
I mean, we face that all the time. There's this big looming challenge, and as far as we can tell, we don't have it in us to move that stone, to move that barrier. And then somewhere, somehow, either through the presence of the others in our community and the love that brings us together, or from some creative new understanding of the situation, or from a greater sense of that power that is within us, we find a way to move the immovable. Or as in the case of this story, someone else does it for us. You know those moments where just the right person or just the right situation shows up just in time and the way is made clear. That is all part of this resurrection experience, both that sense of burden and challenge and then that new beginning when the obstacles are removed or made manageable where the doorway, the entryway, is made clear. In unity, we go beyond celebrating the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. We honor that as a symbol that life is eternal. And we honor that, too, because we know Jesus came as a teacher and a way shower as a brother. He taught us that what he did, we can do also. So in rising from the dead, he was demonstrating that the life that moves through us is an eternal life. You know, nowadays we have documented near-death experiences where people apparently have died had what to them was a death experience and then they come back and are able to share what that is. And through their stories, we get a sense, an experiential sense that life is eternal. Here at Unity of the Valley, we read a book by Anita Morjani called Dying to Be Me. And Anita had been sick for many years with cancer. And she was at the stage that's called end stage, where her organs were shutting down. She was being admitted to the hospital to die. There was absolutely no hope. And literally, her body was shutting down organ by organ. And she did die. She had an experience of death. And she described an experience of love that was infinite and unconditional. She described an experience of oneness that is amazing. And she came back from that. She came back, and within weeks, her, all of her organs were restored to perfect health, all documented medically. And since then, she has been writing and sharing her story as a speaker. So we know that this ability to come back from that which we call death happens. You know, not only in this legend about Jesus, but in experiences we hear about today, experiences that are documented. So the truth that life is eternal is being brought home with each and every one of those stories. But it's more than that. It's also symbolic of the many times in the course of our lives that we die. We have to let go of who we thought we were in order to invite a new version of ourselves. The many times we die when our life circumstances change and sometimes we lose the ability to be who we thought we were. We lose someone and we can no longer be in the role that we were at one point. It's a death in that experience. Or we lose a career or a job and we have to reinvent ourselves. That's a death and resurrection experience. And it can be frightening. It can be painful. But it always holds within it the possibility, the power of the possibilities. Reverend Botarf, 
who is a wonderful Unity author. I heard him talking about this and I really liked it. This is paraphrased because I, I didn't have a written quote to copy. But he said, he asked the people he was speaking to, are you sealed in a tomb of fear and negation, worried about your future, uncertain about the outcome of some current situation? He said, if that is the case, and we've all been there, we've all been there. He said, if that, if that is the case, then begin to release this fear and affirm that the resurrecting power of life is now lifting you beyond all restrictions, all uncertainty, all inhibitions, and that life is full of new possibilities. Once we start opening to that, once we enter into that awareness and consciousness, the doors start opening. And it might be a long, slow journey. It might be an instant resurrection. It really doesn't matter because once we open to this consciousness, miracles can begin. How many people have experienced that type of miracle in their lives? Okay, look around, look around, keep your hands up. You know, yeah. There, each and every one of us can tell, almost each and every one of us can tell the story of, of the time when it all seemed lost. And then here we are again, right? <clears throat> Reverend Batorf went on to say, wherever we are now, it is important for us to die to the self that we are so that the self that we can become can come forth. That is a resurrection experience. That is what we are also celebrating today, this Easter Sunday. And that's a huge thing to celebrate. Imagine if every time we ended up feeling that knocked down, that we felt stuck, that we could not change that. We couldn't emerge out of that victorious. We are celebrating the truth that we can turn situations around. We can connect with that inner divine power and allow it to lead us to a new way of being. That's a huge thing to celebrate. It's a huge thing to celebrate. And so when we reflect on the story of Jesus' experience, we we have to realize that Jesus was teaching us not only with his resurrection, but in the many, many ways he taught and by example and by words that we were not meant to live small. We are meant to live with that divine power expressing through us and to live a life of possibilities. A live a life that demonstrates the power of divine, of the divine that moves through us. You know, this is a key central teaching of Christianity. Sometimes it doesn't get emphasized enough. Sometimes the suffering, at least historically in my upbringing, the, the suffering was emphasized more. But I love unity because I don't think Jesus came to teach us about suffering. Te Jesus came to teach us to live abundantly, to live knowing that power within us. But Christianity isn't the only spiritual tradition that knows this, that teaches it. It's taught in many spiritual traditions. And there was one, I happened to be listening to an audio book by um, Ram Das. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I skipped the slide. Charles Fillmore emphasized that the resurrection is the raising of man into the Christ consciousness of life and wholeness. So basically what I was saying, but he put it into more elegant wording there. But this is the audio book I've been listening to is Polishing the Mirror. It's phenomenal. If 
you like reading or listening to books, Ram Dass is one of my favorite teachers. But in this book, he tells a story of Hanuman. And Hanuman is a person with a monkey's face, so he's sometimes called the monkey god in Hinduism. But he tells the story of Hanuman jumping the ocean to help Ram, which is one of the other Hindu gods, search for his wife, Sita. Now, I'm not promoting that we follow teachings about these individual gods, but in one understanding of Hinduism, it's an understanding that there is only one God, one power, one presence, and that each of these faces of God is an expression of a different aspect of God. And that the oneness that is in God is the oneness of all creation, much like unity teaches. In fact, unity borrowed some of those teachings to write the original unity books, right? Um, and it's true also in our Christian teachings. More and more as you read the latest theologians of, of the other Christian traditions, you get the same message of oneness and the many ways in which God expresses. But anyway, the story of Hanuman, Hanuman became part of a search party to go look for Ram's wife, Sita. She had been abducted and carried off to an island. And they didn't realize that at first, but they were pursuing the abductors. And they got to the edge of the ocean. They were on the beach, and there was the ocean in front of them. And they realized on this island that they couldn't even see was where Sita was. And they didn't know what to do. They didn't have a boat. They didn't have a means of crossing the ocean. And one, the king of the bears, who was part of this posse, looked over at Hanuman and said, Hanuman, you know you have divine powers moving through you. You can jump the ocean. And Hanuman took that into meditation. And this is what happened for him in the meditation. It's great that they took minutes at the time. <laughs> During this meditation, Hanuman became aware of tremendous physical, mental, and spiritual powers bestowed upon him by the grace of God. He became conscious about his ability to fly, his ability to become as big as a mountain or as small as an atom. If he willed, he could become invisible or he could carry out such unusual physical feats which were not possible for an ordinary mortal. Jai Sri Rama became the inspiring slogan for everyone to fill themselves with this same freshness, freshness and courage. The dullness and despondency, the anxiety, the apprehension, and depression gave way to the hope of victory. Hanuman said, Dear brothers, Sri Ram has infused special powers in my life. I am sure I can cross the ocean in one jump. So Hanuman reached within and realized that divine power that was moving through him and he took this huge leap of faith, and we got a picture of it. There's Hanuman jumping the ocean. And there's the denizens of the deep below him. So he jumped the ocean, and they rescued Sita. It's a story that honors that same principle that when we reach inside of us, when we reach deep into who we are and we tap into that divine power, we can do things that we never imagined possible before. And everyone who raised their hand had that experience of thinking something was absolutely hopeless and then finding that new power within and finding ways of moving through and emerging victorious.
where that life of the Christ is able to shine through you once again. So as we celebrate Easter, it's important to remember that the resurrection experience is right here, right now. It is available to us in each and every moment. And I'd like to then end with the affirmation that Jesus gave, I am the resurrection and the life. It is the I am within us that is our own resurrection and the source of our own life. Namaste.